To begin quilling our letters, the first thing we need to do is block out where our letter is going to be on the paper. You want it to fill most of the paper up. You want it to have enough space to fill in. So this one is partially done. and You can see that there is a wide gap to fill the paper inside the spaces of the R. If you look very closely, you can actually see the pencil line. So you don't always have to hit it exactly on there. Once this is completely covered, the pencil lines will be harder to notice. So I am working with the letter S. You're welcome to practice on white paper first. And if you need additional assistance, you can always do um, kind of like a bubble out. So I will do a very, very, very light S on the paper. Just an S. You would draw it lighter than me. I'm pushing a little bit harder so you can see. Try and get it as faint as possible so you don't see it that much. Then I'm going to draw a block or bubble around this, much like you would trace around your hand. And then when you lift your hand up, you'll get an outline of the hand. We are drawing around the S. We don't go through our fingers. We don't actually like touch the ends of our fingertips and stop. We go around each tip. So around this tip without touching it. Turn your paper when you need to. It may not look perfect after this, but you can always adjust after the initial shape is drawn. And I have, I'm not going to attach it to this, I'm going around the S. And now I'm going around the other side and connect. Now the only thing I have to do is erase the middle line. Now an S shape is pretty simple to do a bubble around. Some things like R's or B's, A's have an extra hole in them. So if you have one of those letters, remember that you're going to need to do a second hole. So let's say I have a B. Draw my B first. Now I have to do the outside line and the inside lines. So on the inside, I'm just making a hole in the shape of that part of the letter. And this is pretty thin, so if you wanted to, you could just make this your block letter. That's all you gotta do, it's already a block letter. Um, if you want it to be a little bit bigger, then you would just trace the outside and erase the middle. And that letter just gets a little bigger. Um, this would work for a B, a D, or a O. All you would have to do is just draw an O with a hole in the middle, and you'd have a block. A is another one that people get really confused about because once I draw the little hole in the middle, it's still not a bubble letter. I need to do the outside edge. So all along the outside. And then don't forget to go around the feet and get the inside as well. Now you can see it's uneven here. You don't have to erase your entire letter. Just erase the part that's not right and adjust it. For this part with quilling, there's lots of different techniques and different shapes that you can make with this paper. The key with all of it is to be patient. It's paper. It will do what you ask it to do if you're patient. If I want this to curve slightly, I could use my hand and bend around with my thumb and the paper starts 
to curve. Pretty simple. And I could match it with the curve of the S. Or pretty close. You don't have to get it perfect. For the outline of the shape, you don't need to get too crazy with the designs. Now, this curves a little too much. What do I do? Pull it back straight a little bit. The paper will do what you want if you're just patient with it. When you get it pretty close at the ends, I don't want this paper to just be standing up like this alone. I do want to add some quilling to it, which is curling paper. I'm going to use these skewers and you can choose, I think I want my curls to curl outwards on this S right now. So it's curving in, I'm gonna curl it that way. Taking the paper, putting it on the skewer and pinching it tightly around. And then I'm just wrapping it and curling it. I'm not gonna do too much because this is the outline of my S and I'll be doing plenty of curling inside. So just a little bit and then when I pull it off, I'm still pinching it. I can even release it and I'll get a little, a little curl. You can leave it tight like that or if you like, just slowly coax it open so it's a little wider. So down here, I could line it up with that. So this one, I kind of want it to curl inwards. So making sure it's pointing the right way. Pinch around, twist around the skewer a little bit, a couple times. Now if you take it and decide, eh, I want it a little bit more, you can backtrack pinch it around again and curl a little bit more. When I'm sliding it off, I'm using my thumb to push the whole coil off at the same time so it doesn't pull out. I think I'll keep that one tight instead of pulling it. So it got shorter now that I curled the edges, but it still fits that S curve very well. Now how do I get it to stick? I'm using trays that have glue on it. Obviously this isn't as big as this piece of paper, so what I'll do is dip just the edge all along the bottom. Make sure the curls get in there too. And you can see a very thin bit of glue on most of the surface. pretty covered. Lay it along the pencil line. Now if the curve didn't match quite right, this is your chance to adjust it a little bit. Because it's glue, it can stick in a slightly different position. You'll need to hold it down though, very gently not to crush it, but to help the paper um, start to stick with the glue. Do my next strip. I want it curving in here. So this I'm going to have to curl and then curve out. So I'm going to have to really bend this. I'm bending it almost backwards this way. Ooh, actually looks really nice like that. I might skip this. That turned out better than I thought it would. Oh yeah, no, I like it here much better. It fits that S very well. I'm going to loosen this a little bit. It's pretty close. I'm going to curl that end anyway. You can see the paper is not doing what I want, but I'm not getting frustrated because it is just paper. It's not a big deal. You can always bend it and curve it more or less. And if it's really not doing exactly what you want, the glue will help you later. I'm going to curl this one in. 
Um, I didn't quite get it. If it's not tight enough, just start again. Pinch it tightly as you curl it around. And then push it off the rod. All right, that's pretty close. I have something I'm gonna need to add there, but this looks pretty close now. If I don't put it in the right place the first time, you can kind of always pick it up and move it around. This glue dries clear, so you don't have to worry about seeing any glue mess ups. And right now I can continue these lines all the way down and attach them. What I should do here, I kind of want to do one big spiral right there. You can do smaller pieces, like on this one, I made an S shape, so one curling one way and the other curling the other way. A lot of these just attach curling one way while the other's curling the opposite, one out, one in. I think I'll do a big spiral right here. So it will be loose, but I want, want it to start tight. Take my blue, I'm going to do the whole thing. And then carefully, using my finger to push the whole stack at the same time. And I'll show you what happens if you don't do that. If you don't, it starts to pull out and it ruins the coil. If that does happen, you can kind of press it back in together if you only started. You can start again. by finding the end, just ignoring that stuff back there, and just coiling it one more time. It's just paper. It will do what you want if you're patient with it. Don't bend it or rip it too harshly, because if you do it too much, then we won't be able to fix the problem. If you're gentle, we'll be able to adjust it. If it's too tight and you really can't get it off, you can release the coil with a little bit with your fingers. That'll make it easier to uh, slide off. Right. I have a pretty small coil. As I release it, it will get bigger and bigger. It's still too small for that. I want to fill that hole, that gap of space. So all I'm doing is kind of pulling some of the edges out a little bit at a time, kind of going back and forth. Still not quite big enough. I might even just take the end and pull it a little bit. Oh, look at that. Now it fits. It can stick out. It doesn't have to be a straight flat line. Now that I know I'm going to do that, I might get rid of this line. I don't see it. And then just find a way to fit this in the top part of this. And for coils like this, if you try and dip it in the glue a little bit at a time, the rest of it's going to stick. It's not going to come. You kind of have to pinch the bigger coils. Tap it down and then pinch it and lift it up with two hands. Whoa, it's a lot of glue. I want this to curl out because that's curling in. You can even push it so it overlaps a little bit because that might look kind of neat. Now what I just did was I bent the paper right where the end of the S was so I knew how big I wanted that coil to be. I stretched it out so I knew exactly where it would stand. Okay, so here again I have a long tail. So I want it to end about here. So I'm going to take this piece of paper and almost pinch it just a little bit so I can see 
where I want the coil to end. Right here. So, I might even loosen that one. So it looks big. Don't get too crazy with your curls for the outside of the letter because you do still want it to look like the letter you're making. So this looks like an S. 